How's everybody? Are you blessed and highly flavored? Yeah, praise God. This is the night the Lord has made and we will rejoice because we have a choice. Everyone say I have the power to choose. And I don't choose to lose. We choose to win. Amen. Victory. Victory in Christ. Glory. Praise God. You know, we are, I can't emphasize again the arena and time and season that we are in. If you don't realize it, you need to. <laughs> there are a lot of things that are manifesting, a lot of things that are being exposed. And God is requiring certain things of us. He's requiring a deeper relationship. Amen? Amen. Amen? One of the things he's requiring us to do is to seek and look deeper. Seek and look deeper. And it's a time where we've got to go deeper, not just be surface level. This is not about a religious act. Amen? Amen. God never came to bring religion. He came to bring relationship. And he requires that we know him and know him in the spirit because only through the Holy Spirit are you able to interpret his word and those who are led by the spirit are called sons of God. Amen? Amen. Would you turn to Hebrews chapter 9? Hebrews chapter 9. <clears throat> You know, one of the things that the Word talks about is requirements. In Romans 8, he talks about a requirement that is to be met. He said, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ, but to those who are, say they're in Christ, who walk according to the flesh, there's condemnation. But those who do not walk according to the flesh, there is no condemnation. And there is a righteous requirement from every single one of us. And you can look that up yourself, Romans 8. And in this requirement, God is testing us. He's qualifying us. One of the things that we talked about in our last gathering was God's presence. There's a level of presence that we need to maintain, that we need to reach. Without that level of God's presence, you can't overcome You'll be easily distracted, deceived, manipulated, and you'll react instead of respond. Amen? And not only that, the demons know what level of presence is on you. They'll torment you to get fed. In Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 1, let's speak it together, please. That indeed, even if the first covenant had ordinances of divine service and earthly sanctuary, and the earthly sanctuary for the tabernacle, everyone say tabernacle, tabernacle, was prepared. This was a place of God's presence. A tabernacle. There was three chambers in a tabernacle, the outer court, holy place, and most holy place. Everything revolves around the tabernacle of God and the feast of the Lord. Everything. Verse 2, for the tabernacle was prepared, the first part in which was the lampstand, the table, and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. And behind the second veil, the part of the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer, the ark, and the covenant overlaid on the all sides with gold, in which were the golden pot that had the manna, Aaron's rod that budded, and the tablets of the covenant, which we call the most holy place. And above it were the cherubim of glory, overshadowing the mercy seat. Of these things we cannot now speak in detail. Now when these things had been thus prepared, the priests always went into the first part of the tabernacle, pre performing services. Why? Because the priests were qualified. 
Has everybody got it? They were what? Qualified. God had qualified these priests to enter the tabernacle. Not anyone could go into the tabernacle at that time. They had to be qualified. That was like having a security clearance, you know. <laughs> and they had to, to be qualified, they had to wear certain garments. They had to pre do certain rituals to be qualified to enter that arena. <clears throat> and verse 7, but in the second part, the high priest. So there was a high priest, which we call the most holy place. He's not mentioning the outer court here. Is everybody with me? Okay. But in, in, in the, what we call the second part, or actually we call the third part, where the holy of holies is, it says the high priest went in once a year. Now, he was qualified. He was a high priest. He wasn't just a priest. So he had a third level security. Has everybody got it? <laughs> and... and and he went into the second part once a year, not without the blood, which he offered for himself and for the people's sins and committed in ignorance. The Holy Spirit indicating this, that the way into the holiest of all, the most holy place, was not yet made manifest while the first tabernacle was still standing. In other words, it hadn't been made for man to access yet. It was symbolic for the pre-present time in which both gifts and sacrifices are offered which cannot make him or who performed the service perfect in regard to the conscience, concerned only with foods and drinks and various washings and fleshly ordinances imposed until the time of reformation. But Christ came as the what? High priest of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is not of this creation. Not with the blood of goats and the cows, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. Why? Because God created his own blood. Amen. It was blemish free. For if the blood of bulls and goats and ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this reason, he is a mediator of the new covenant by means of death for redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. This is powerful. Again, the Old Testament priests were qualified by uh, um, certain garments they wore and ordinances and things that, of dress and, and duties and service. They were to be maintained as uh, the duty of the tabernacle. And they were a, of a, another tribe also. They were given to, uh, they were given to keep things cleansed. They were, the, and then the high priest was qualified to shed the blood and, and go into the most holy place and so forth. Again, the, the third chamber of the tabernacle we called the third level. Is everybody with me? It's called the what? Third level. There are three levels. There is the first. The deeper you get. Is everybody with me? So when you enter the first chamber, we call it kind of like the first level. Because that's where salvation begins. It was the shedding of the blood by Christ Jesus. That's why he's called the way, the truth, and the life. Those are the name of the three chambers of the tabernacle. The second chamber is called the holy place. And that's where priestly garments are. That's where you, where you get baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's where you get your heavenly language. And the third chamber we call is the third level. In the, in the area where you are become a king which means warrior, it's kingship. You are a warrior in this arena. You have qualified, you've reached the third level. But there are qualifications for the third level. It is a security clearance. And God requires us to reach certain levels of trust. There are certain things that we've got to go through to gain his trust. Does everybody understand that? His love for me and you is unconditional, but his trust is not. It is earned. His trust is what? earned. Amen. 
in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Second Corinthians chapter 12. Hallelujah. In verse 1, Paul was chosen by God. God slam dunked him in the Holy Spirit. Paul was out persecuting, killing, and murdering Christians. And God took a murderer. But he thought he was doing it for God. Talk about a religious spirit. <laughs> Yeah, he was doing it for God, all right? Then the Lord showed up. <laughs> Just had to kick him off his horse, blind him, keep him blinded for a few days. One thing that Paul said, he said, who are you, Lord? <laughs> I'd, I'd say he got a revelation right off the bat. And then he asked him, what do you want me to do? <laughs> And then a man called Ananias, who had a vision from the Lord, went and saw Paul three days later. Laid his hands on him. Paul got baptized in the Holy Spirit, spoke in tongues and scales, came off of his eyes. He was a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things become new. And God said that Paul must suffer many things. But his name was first Saul, and God changed his name to Paul. And Paul got revelation many times. He wrote most of the new covenant the New Testament. In verse 1, it is doubtless and not profitable for me to boast. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord, says Paul. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body, I don't know, or whether out of the body, I don't know. God knows. Such a one was caught up to the what? Third heaven. Third heaven. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows how he was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressibly words, which, cannot lawful, or which is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such a one I will boast, yet of myself I will not boast except in my infirmities. For though I might desire to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will speak the truth. But I refrain, lest anyone should think of me above what he seems to me be or hears from me. Unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelations, a thorn was in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said, that's your flesh, brother. <laughs> that's your flesh. <laughs> And he said, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. There most assuredly, glad, most uh, gladly, I rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest on me. Again, there's something powerful he says. He said, my strength is made perfect in your weaknesses. In other words, when you finally come to the end of yourself, there's a new beginning. Always. So God's always trying to bring you to the end of yourself. That's why there's certain levels that we reach. It's a certain level of death. There's certain levels that we reach. And it qualifies you to have access to certain things of God. Here Paul was taken to the third heaven. God obviously trusted Paul to bring him there, don't you think? I'd say he had a third level security clearance. <laughs> Everyone say third level. God is trying to bring us to a third level. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Third level, yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
2 Corinthians chapter 4. Is everybody there? In verse 7. Let's speak it. But we have this treasure in earth and vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not us. For we are what? Hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal body. So the death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who ra raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sake, that grace having spread through the many may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, we don't lose what? Heart. heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is but being what? Renewed day by day, being renewed. For our light affliction, which seems to be for a moment, for some, and some longer, it's working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Verse 18. While we do not look at the things which are what? Seen, but the things that are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. Eternal. Paul's reality of life for Christ was reaching a level of endurance. He had to reach a level for what? Endurance. He had to reach a level of faith. He had to reach a level of discernment. He had to reach a level of sanctification. These were third levels that Paul was reaching. He had to reach a level of interpretation of God's words, his voice. He had to reach a level of relationship with his spirit. These levels qualified Paul. Does everybody get it? It granted him access to things where no other man had access. Moses had access to God like no other man. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Amen. How much access do you want to God? then there's levels that you and I must reach. It's called qualifications. 1 Corinthians 3. First Corinthians 3 and verse 9. Hallelujah. You know, we want everything. We should, we should desire everything. Every drop of blood that he paid for me and you. The price that he paid for me and you is phenomenal. But he paid that price so you and I could access. But too many people quit, give up, and don't pursue. In verse 9. Let's read it. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field and you are God's building. According to the grace of God. Now again, the word grace means God's plan. Amen. According to the plan of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid by, which is Christ Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with what? Gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw. Each one's work will become clearer, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. Now, this is Holy Spirit fire. Does everybody understand that? This is not physical fire. What he's saying, you cannot build the kingdom of God by materialism, things of creation. You must build things by the creator. 
There may be a building here, but it don't mean stinking nothing. Amen? It doesn't become the house of God until the God's people come in it. Now it becomes the house of God. And then we worship and remove darkness to bring the presence of the Lord. And of course, the level of your worship is going to bring the level of his presence. Oh, hallelujah. Some people scream and kick and yell at a football game, basketball game, and chase a pigskin more than they do God's presence. Is everybody okay? <laughs> hallelujah. And verse 14, if anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a what? A reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God does what? Dwells in you. If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is what? Holy, which temple you are. Which temple you are. Wow. Qualified as a builder, reaching a level of commitment, reaching a level of observation. You must be able to see detail, observation. In other words, that gives you sight. One of the greatest joys the Lord has is you see what he sees. I'm going to say this again. Qualified as a builder, reaching a level of commitment, observation, Reaching a level of priorities and reaching a level of identity. Because one of the things that the enemy comes to do first is steal your identity. Some people never reach their identity yet. In 1 John chapter 3, reaching a level of trust. Amen. Again, God can't trust you. He's not going to give you something he can't trust you with. 1 John chapter 3. Third level security clearance. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. It's everybody there, verse 1. Beloved, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called what? Children, Children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know Him. Beloved, now as we are children of God and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when He is revealed, we shall be what? Like Him. For we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope or trust in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. And he who has sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Why? That word might means you and I must cooperate with him now. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. Doesn't mean you won't make a mistake, but you won't let sin reign. Amen. For his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifested. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. For this is a message that you've heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of the wicked one, and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil, and his brothers were what? Righteous. Again, there was a level of integrity, a level of humility, and a level of trust that was met. Does everybody get this? 
in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. First John chapter four. In verse one. Let a man so consider us as what? Servants. As what? Is everybody there? Servants. servants of Christ. In other words, servants to the anointing. And stewards of the mysteries of God. Is everybody with me? First Corinthians chapter four. I did? We are at it, John, already. Okay. Hey. Forgive me. <laughs> Praise God. Just rebuke the pastor. Tell him, man. Don't take no garbage. It doesn't matter where he's at. Tell him. <laughs> I will receive that correction, though. In humbleness. <laughs> yes. All right. First John. No, I'm only kidding. First Corinthians chapter four. <laughs> Verse one. Let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required. Everyone say required. required. That means you must reach a what? Level. In stewardship, that one be found what? Faithful. Must reach his level of faithfulness. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by a human court. In fact, I don't even judge myself. For I know of nothing against myself, yet I am not justified by this. But he who judges me is the Lord. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the heart. Then each one's praise will come from the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, again, here we are as a levels of stewardship, reaching a level of stewardship. This means that you must reach a level of obedience and denial of self. There is a level. A level of stewardship, obedience, and denial of self. Second Timothy chapter two. Hallelujah. Second Timothy chapter two. Second Timothy chapter two. I might get to grab hold of something because in this third level, in other words, I look at it as a parallel of the third chamber of the tabernacle. In the third chamber of the tabernacle, the glory of God was. Amen. That means in this third level. As required for me and you to reach the glory of God. So many people are looking for the manifestation of the glory of God, but the glory of God is in you. This is a place where you are constantly walking in peace, joy, and righteousness all the time. Because the glory of God that is in you is constantly flowing. Praying in tongues is not a difficult thing because it just flows. Con just flows. You are nothing but a walking river of God. And wherever you step, God's presence is with you. And the powers of darkness see. They know the level of God's presence on you because you reach the level of worship. So this third level is where the glory of God is in you. It's not an outward, it's an inward. In other words, his voice is clear. Everything is a constant. You always, you, you always have the Lord before you. You always realize that you're in a temporary place. It's constant, no matter what's going on. Everything is temporary, and you're able to see 
because your observation is different. You're able to see through things. You're able to see to the end. Every decision that you're getting ready to make, you know the end result. It's different. It's not normal. It's not human. Does everybody understand that? And that third level, it's no, you're no longer a human light. You're an eternal light. Oh, glory. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. Let's read it. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to who? Faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Therefore, you must what? Endure. You must reach a level of endurance. Too many wimp out. Patience is endurance. Amen? You must, therefore, you must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus. That's where he says, count it all joys you go through, trials and tribulations or challenges. It says, no one engaged in warfare. There must be a level of warfare that you must reach. Entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also if anyone competes in athletics, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say and may the Lord give you what? Understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel for which I suffered trouble as an evildoer. That was called endurance, right? Even to the point of chain. He was chained. But the word of God didn't, is not chained. Therefore I endure what? All things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying, if we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Remind them of these things and charge them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed Rightly dividing the word of truth, that's for interpretation. Reaching a level of interpretation is essential. But shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. And their messages will spread like cancer, Simeus and Philist, uh, Philetus, as this sort, who have strayed concerning the what? Truth. truth. Saying that the resurrection is already past, and they overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands having this seal. The Lord knows those who are what? His. And let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from what? Iniquity. The Lord knows those who are His. He brings His seal of approval. There is a seal of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and there is a seal of approval. And there is a seal that we don't understand or that we don't see, but it's a level of qualification that we reach that he seals us does everybody understand that it is a seal by his presence and the demons can't touch you they cannot touch you they can try and speak to you but they cannot touch you in fact because of that level their distance is further does everybody understand that? Their distance is further away. See, they know the level of the presence of God on you. That allows them to get closer. But if you're a, a, a third level security clearance individual of the kingdom, their distance is farther. Why? Because you have access to the things of God where others don't. So there must be a level of warfare you must reach. There must be a level of endurance. There must be a level of sanctification that means separated unto him. Hmm. Why? Because the, and of course the level of his presence and the level of worship. 
Why? Because you will do everything to fulfill the mission no matter what. You know you've been sent on a mission and you must fulfill it. And there is a maintaining qualification to reach the level so you can fulfill it. Listen, if you don't have access to the things of God, how are you going to fulfill your mission? You won't. You'll fall short of it. You'll be successful in the wrong assignment. And you don't want to do that. 1 Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1. In verse 13. First Peter chapter 1 verse 13. Let's speak it together. Therefore gird up the loins of your what? Your mind or your thoughts. Be sober. And rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now listen, he says be sober. That means you're to be alert, observant. As what? Obedient. So you and I must reach a level of what? Obedience. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lust as in your ignorance. But as he called you is what? holy you also be holy in all of your conduct because it is written be holy for what i am holy and if you call on the father who without partiality judges according to each one's work conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in what fear in other words that means fear of the lord there must be a level of the reverence of god and that cannot be met without the level of of god's presence it cannot be met without the level of God's presence. Knowing that you are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in these last times for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are where? In God. Wow. So again, there must be a level of obedience, a level of holiness. That means not touching what is unclean. Not touching which is what? Unclean. It's called a level of sanctification. And again, those things cannot be met without a level of presence of God in your life. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Therefore, if there's any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any what? Fellowship of the Spirit. That's why it's so important to reach a level of fellowship with the Holy Spirit. If any affection and mercy fulfill my joy by being what like-minded with who the spirit right and with each other having the same love being of one accord of one mind let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit but in loneliness of mind let each esteem others better than himself let each of you look out not only for his own interest but also for the interests of others and let this mind be in you which is also in christ jesus being what? Who being a form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal to God, but made himself of no reputation, taking a form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he what? Humbled. How many of y'all know you got to reach a level of humility? A level of what? Humility. Humbleness. For he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even to the death of the cross. Wow. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave, given him 
the name which is above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Therefore, my beloved, if you always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with what? Fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. There must be a level of fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And again, there must be a level of death of your past. In other words, we no longer want to live from the past to the present. We live from the future to the present. It makes a totally different lifestyle. We must reach a level where we are able to see and hear and interpret times and seasons. Because many people don't know what the heck's going on. They have no idea what's going on. And when things begin to happen, they're just going to be dumbfounded. And how do you get this? Now, I want you to understand something that all of this will be as we reach these levels. In other words, to be more like-minded with the Holy Spirit and able to see and able to hear and interpret times and seasons is because God's allowed you access already. This will be the fruit of those things. Hallelujah. Second Timothy 2. In verse 21. Oh, to have access to all the things of the Lord. You must reach the third level of security clearance. <laughs> Hallelujah. In verse 21, is everybody there? Therefore, if anyone does what? Cleanses himself from the latter or his past. He'll be a vessel of honor. Sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Hmm. Flee also youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate what? Strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Again, cleansing from the past. Hmm. You cannot bring your past into the future. It doesn't work. It's like putting um, new wine into an old wine skin. It will burst. Remember, what God has brings us through seasons. And if you bring what God has cleansed you from the past and you do the same thing over and bring it into the next season, you will contaminate that season and you will have to repeat the season that you came from. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, there's an area where we must reach a level of responsibility. Responsibility. And responsibility means the ability, able, the ability means uh, the ability to respond in a Christ-like manner. In other words, you're no longer reacting according to the old man. You're now responding according to the new man. It's the ability to respond. That's called responsibility. Galatians chapter 2. It's not a joke. It's not a religious act. It's a matter of life and death. We are in a war. Amen. Amen.
And if you're not in the battle, you will become a casualty. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 17. A couple more scriptures. Is everybody there? Galatians chapter 2 and verse 17. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is Christ therefore a minister of sin? Certainly not. For if I build again those things which I what? Destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. In other words, this is what we were just talking about. If God cleansed you from something and you begin to build on what he cleansed you from and you bring it into the new season, you contaminate that new season and you must repeat that new season. For though I, uh, for I through the law died to the law that I might live to God, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. There's a level of identity that we must always reach. A level of obedience that produces righteousness your level of obedience will produce righteousness again it always goes back to sort of how, how what the level of the presence of god is on you how about a level of respect if you so respect you reap it if you so disrespect you reap it amen there's a level of respect that god has required of each and every one of us In Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 19. Hebrews 10 verse 19. Are you there? Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus... By a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. And even a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a what? True heart and full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works not forsaking to assemble of ourselves together as the manner of some, but exhorting one another so that so much the more as you see the day what? The day approaching. There must be a level of boldness, conviction, repentance, and commitment. In other words, you and I should be looking for conviction. Does everybody get that? We should look for conviction. Lord, what is it? Is there anything I've done that's offended you? We should be sensitive to those things. Why? Because you want to maintain that third level of his presence. You better be looking for conviction. And I want to close in Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 14. Now, you don't have to walk around with a badge that says you've been third level security clearance. <laughs> Is everybody there? <laughs> and let's speak it together. For he himself is our what? Peace who has made both one. And has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace. And that he might reconcile them, 
both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and to those who were near. For through him we both have access by what? Spirit. One spirit to the Father, and that is the Holy Spirit. Now, therefore, you who are, you are what? You are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Having built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Wow. Listen, be more than just a citizen. Be more than just a citizen in the kingdom. Live a life of access, reaching a third level of clearance where you have access to everything of God. Amen? <laughs> Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I ask that you protect the seed that's been imparted into each and every one with revelation, that you'll give everyone here a thirst and hunger to want to live a higher calling, more than just a citizen, but a warrior. You've called us to be kings and priests in your kingdom. Kings, priests, citizens. Lord, teach us to endure and teach us to reach the levels that are pleasing to you so that you can trust us to have access to all the things of you. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.